I'd like to focus, though, on one very key moment in today's Gospel where it says, the prodigal son, he came to his senses, getting up, and he returned to his father. In this one line, the, the prodigal son coming to his senses, getting up, and returning to his father. That, that right there encompasses the essence of sacrifice and the way of salvation. You know, whenever we think about sacrifice, we always think about destruction, like losing something. So Lent is all about sacrifice. What are you going to give up? Like, okay, I'll destroy my love for sweets or I'll destroy my love for TV or for candy, for drinks, whatever it might be. But biblically, biblically speaking, sacrifice is never about destruction. It's always about uniting with. Like what? That's the whole question God keeps bringing up in the Old Testament. What joy could I ever get out of your destruction? I am the God of the living, not of the dead. So he's never looking to destroy anything, but always reuniting. But you think about it, it's all about perspective. Because whenever someone's outside of a relationship, whatever is done in that relationship looks like a destruction. So two people who are in love, they naturally sacrifice themselves for, for each other. Like a mother, the most, be- most uh, precious gift a woman has is her beauty. And yet she sacrifices her entire body energy, everything she is for the child that is given to her. But that's not a sacrifice to her. That's just a natural act of love, right? And with a father, fathers sacrifice their time, their energy, their work in order to provide for their family. But within that relationship, it's a gift of love, while other people will see it as a destruction. And the most common example is, you know, like young people who fall in love and want to get married. A young man, all his friends are saying, do you realize what you're doing? You're destroying your freedom. You're destroying your opportunities. You're destroying your youth. You're destroying your possibility to marry any other girl in this world. What does he say? The one who's actually in love. This isn't a destruction. This isn't a death. I'm in love with this woman. And to be with her, I'm willing to let go of every other thing that would keep me from her. My freedom my friends, every other woman in this world, I'm willing to destroy that so that I can be united with her. See that? So sacrifice is all about perceptive perception. Those on the outside of the relationship see it as a destruction, while those on the inside see it only as a natural gift of love. So that's the true nature of sacrifice, to fall so deep in love with another that you're willing to let go of everything else in order to attain it. That's why sacrifice, it it comes from the words sacro facere, to make holy. And how is anything made holy in this world? By being united with Jesus Christ. That's why St. Paul says in his second letter, I implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled with God. That's the essence of salvation, is sacrifice. Be reuniting with God through Jesus Christ. And so why talk about sacrifice in light of today's gospel? Because we're all as human beings, we're born in exile. We're born in a state of separation from God. This is fundamental to our understanding of a Christian life. We're born in that same exile that that prodigal son was in when he came to his senses in a state of separation from God. And our natural temptation is to take all the gifts that we've received, our inheritance, right? And to spend it on this world. To take our time, our energy, our money, our family, whatever it is, to give all of our attention, our love, to the things of this world rather than God. And then what happens? We become enslaved to it. That's always the consequence of sin. We become enslaved to what we love more than God. The most successful slavery is not forced from the outside. It's that which comes from within. There's one man who lived as a slave for over 20 years in the 1800s. His name was Frederick Douglass. And he wrote, When a slave becomes a happy slave... He forfeits what makes him most human. I have found that to make a contented slave 
it is necessary to make a thoughtless one. One who does not realize or care about the fact that he has been enslaved. And that's exactly what the goal of the devil is to us in this world. To entice us so much with the temptations of the flesh and the goods that the world provide us. To make us happy and thoughtless slaves. To lose our ability to think and to reason. To come to ourselves and get back up and go to the Father. To make us forget about our home in heaven. Now how much, how easy it is to become enslaved with all the technology that's been given us. You have every single thing at your, at your fingertips with television now. With the iPhone right in our hand. With constant sports. Every time a new season. New movies. Every single week coming out. You have all these things that can constantly take our attention and enslave us to the here and now. I mean, you ask yourself, are you in control of your media or is your media control of you? Well, what happens if you put it down? Can you put your phone down for a day and just go without it? What would happen? Can you shut off your Facebook for a week? So who's in charge? Can you step away from sports? Do we belong to it or does it belong to us? You know, driving just out here the other day was a, such a powerful image to me. I saw this, this cow pen and all these cows, it, there was absolutely no grass. It was just dirt it was mud and dung everywhere. And these cows from little calves just newly born to huge bulls all covered in this mud and dirt and they're just laying around there and their pen was no bigger than this, probably this church. That's all they've ever known their entire life. They were born into that. So how would they ever know to get out? And that's the primary temptation that we have as human beings. We're born in exile from God. And our temptation is to try to make our home here, to forget that we're made for so much more than what is here. And that's exactly what the devil wants. To make us believe that this dirt is what is right, is our natural inheritance, that there's nothing more for us. So I'll never get up, I'll never turn around. You know, it's interesting that even as a military strategy, when Israel broke into Palestine years ago to try to take it over, you know what the first thing that they did was? They broke into their broadcast towers, their radio towers, and television. They took over their TV and they began to broadcast pornography throughout all the televisions. You got to ask yourself, why in the world would that be used as a military tactic from one nation trying to overcome another? Because a man who is enslaved to his passions, to his flesh, is a man who will never fight for his freedom. He'll become so sucked into the dirt around him, he'll forget his destiny to break out of that, to be so much more. The essence of conversion, of sacrifice, is that moment of the prodigal son's life where the gospel says, coming to his senses. He realized where he was, how far he had fallen, and he got up to go back to the Father. It's a return to the Father. And it's a waking up to realize, I'm worth more than what I'm surrounded by. I'm worth more than just what has been given to me in my time. I'm not just going to be a product of my culture, of where I'm at. I can actually change this. But it's got to come from inside. You've got to think for yourself for that. And to do that, you have to step away from the world that you're in. The hardest thing in our life is that waking up, that realizing, and that turning back. Because all we've ever known is this dirt we were born in this exile. This is where we spent our life. I said, when God called me to be a priest, I spent two years with all my heart trying to run away from it. Because all I saw it as was a destruction. A loss of all my hopes and dreams of what I thought my life should be or could be. 
I didn't see it for all the love and the joy and the peace I'd find in Christ. Because when we're not in that relationship of love, it looks like a destruction. Now it's great because people will see me on the street and like they'll come up to me and like, oh, thank you so much for your sacrifice. And they'll like hand me $20, like go buy a TV dinner and some bonbons tonight. You know, like, because they feel bad for me. They think I need to be pitied. They only see the destruction. They only see the death of the marriage or of whatever I had to give up. They don't see all the beauty and the gift and the life that was brought from it. And I too only saw the destruction. But the sacrifice came when I was willing to finally, with the grace of God, to let go of the things of this world and turn back and start walking towards the Father. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do in life. And if you're not in that battle, that means you're not doing it. If the Catholic faith is not hard for you, it means that you're not living it, especially in our times. Because our flesh is so entrenched in this world that in order to rise from that, you must experience a death, a transformation of leaving it behind to start living for something else. But sacrifice is never about a destruction. It's about new life. It's about returning to the Father to receive our true understanding of who we are as sons and daughters of God, not slaves meant to be working in pig pens. But that's exactly where the devil wants to keep us. And that's our natural state of birth. And this is the great drama, and this is the essence of what I want to tell you guys today. This is the central drama of life. Because only those who sacrifice can be saved. Meaning only those who wake up and realize that we're not where we're supposed to be. And we're not who we're supposed to be. And they're willing to sacrifice, to let go of the things of this world. So that they can begin to turn back and move towards the Father. Only they can be saved because they're moving into the way of salvation. The prodigal son, the father was waiting for him, hoping for him, seeing him from a long way off. But the prodigal son had to make the choice to get up and to go back. To let go of the things that was keeping him entrenched. You know, it's interesting. St. Augustine wrote a book called The City of God. It's a thousand page synopsis from the 4th century about what it means to be a Catholic in the world. And that entire 100,000 page opera, opera, one of his greatest works that he ever wrote, can be summed up with one idea. There are two cities on earth. The city of God and the city of man. And just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you belong to the city of God. Just because you're a priest definitely does not mean you belong to the city of God. The city of man is composed of those who love the world so much that they're willing to sacrifice their relationship with God in order to possess it. While the city of God is composed of those who love God so much that they're willing to sacrifice their relationship with the world. Those are the two cities. And the drama, the tragedy, the most difficult truth for us is the fact that most people choose the world. Most people choose to sacrifice their relationship with God to love the world. And all we have to do is look around us to know that's true. And that's why Christ said, wide and spacious is the road that leads to destruction and many are they that take it. Straight and narrow is the way that leads to salvation, and few are they that find it. Therefore, strive to enter in through the narrow gate. And when they asked him, who will be saved? Jesus responded, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. In other words, sacrifice it. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. You know, I had this young man come to me just this last week, fallen away Catholic, hasn't been to 
mass in years. And he, he was writing a paper, a school report, on the development of hell in the Catholic Church, which was interesting he'd even have a thought to want to do that. But he came to me saying, well, when did the Catholic Church t- change its teachings on hell? I was like, well, what are you talking about? He goes, well, I was doing a lot of research on it, and hell was always talked about in the beginning of the church and up through the Middle Ages and up until even the 19th, 20th, 19th century. But then all of a sudden, it seemed like there was a change, and now there's a universalism, like everybody goes to heaven. He says, I just want to know exactly when that changed and why. And I looked at him and said, the, the church has never changed its teachings on hell. It's the same as it's always been. Problems, we just don't talk about it anymore. And we don't talk about it anymore, and we're surprised why people, if you have the choice to sit at home and watch, watch a game on TV on Sunday, or come to church, if there's no consequences for choosing to stay at home, why in the world would you make the sacrifice to be here? Every single one of you that is here right now had something else I guarantee you would have wanted to do than be here right now especially on a beautiful day like this, especially in Lapway when you have to come to Mass in the middle of the day, which I feel bad for you about every week. I mean, you should get an early Mass. You have to sacrifice something every single time you come here. Question is, why have so many people left the church? Why is it 70% of Catholics don't go to church anymore? 70%. They don't see the consequences of what will happen if when they sacrifice their relationship with God for the world. And that's why Jesus spoke more about the dangers of hell than he did of the glory of heaven. Did you know that? And that's why I would fail as a Catholic priest to talk more about the glory of heaven than the dangers of hell, which is, this is like the first homily I've ever given on hell. Anyway, when we don't talk about the consequences for choosing the world, which is what Christ did all the time, then of course we're going to choose the world. So we can all ask ourselves today, there's two cities, those who sacrifice the world for God and those who sacrifice God for the world. Those who stay in the pig pen and those who rise up realize that they're made for so much more and begin their journey home. Which do I belong to? You just ask yourself, which do I belong to? Well, look at your life. Which does it reflect? In what ways we can ask ourselves, am I sacrificing my relationship with God in order to have a better relationship with the world? One of them is coming to Mass every week and every holy day of obligation. There's 168 hours every week in every week to not give God one hour, which is 0.016% of the week. To not give God that one hour back means there's a fundamental disorientation in our life. And that's 70% of Catholics right now. Going to confession at least once a year, at least. And if there's any mortal or serious sin in our soul, to go to confession immediately. To not do that means that we're more attached to the sin in our life in the world than we are going to heaven. What needs to be sacrificed in my life so I can get up and return to the Father? And that's why we need the sacrifice of the Mass every time we come here, every week. Because I don't know about you, but I am so in love with this world. I can't let go of it. I need help. And Christ knows that. God knows how weak we are. And that's why He comes to us through the sacrifice of the Mass in His own body, blood, soul, and divinity. His true presence in the Holy Eucharist. He comes to us so that by receiving Him, Like the good shepherd, he comes to us, so receiving him wherever we're lost, wherever we're so entrenched in the world, he can pick us up and carry us back to the Father. But in order to experience that, we need to know what we're doing. We need to understand what's happening at Mass every time I come here. 
So I invite you as we move now to the Eucharist. Number one, ask yourself, do you believe that Jesus Christ is truly present right before you in this Mass? Do you believe that? Does your life reflect that? And when you receive Him, take a moment of silence and think about what are the things in your life that are keeping you entrenched in this world? What are the lies that the devil is telling you to keep you entrenched in whatever dirt is around your life? And ask Christ, you do it in me. I'm too attached to my work. I'm too attached to sports. I'm too attached to media. I'm too attached to pornography. I'm too attached to money. Whatever it is. I need your help. Pick me up and carry me home. Take me back to the Father. For I am the lost sheep. I am the prodigal son. But you, my God, are my Savior. And I wish to love you more than everything else in this world. Therefore, I'm willing to sacrifice everything else in this world to be with you.